<laughs> Come on. Where's my cam cam? Oh, there's Max. Okay. So, yeah, I've come out here to talk about you guys. Right. So, first of all, the wellies, guys. Shout out to my friend Sarah for buying me these wellies. Hey, Dot. Uh, they have little dogs on. So, new, new season wellies. It's that time of year. It is October. So, things are getting pretty wet and muddy again outside. Um, and we spend a lot of time outside. So, wellies are back on. We'll be on probably now until April. Um, the reason I am making this video is because a lot of people have been asking me... Dot, dot, dot. Right, thank you. A lot of people have been asking me if I am going to be, or we are going to be, should I say, having another litter from Eve and Gambit. And as you can see, they are still together. However, the answer is no. No, we are not. And I wanted to explain the reason that we're not going to be having another litter from Eve and Gambit. So, when you make a pairing with two dogs uh, for a breed with a standard, you make that pairing based on the traits and behaviours and health of that pair. And you try to find a pair that will complement each other physically and complement each other temperamentally and make sure that the two pairs together would not produce any um, known health risks or health issues that you may have within your breed. And when we paired even Gambit, we knew that they were both pretty fit and healthy. Neither of them were carrying any genetic disorders and diseases that we see in, in wolf dogs. Sorry. Um, they obviously, Gambit has some German Shepherd, so we had to make sure that he wasn't carrying any diseases, known hereditary genetics that cause problems for German Shepherds. And Eve has some great Pyrenees, so we had to make sure that she wasn't carrying any known genetics or problems that we know are in the breed of Great Pyrenees and then we obviously just have to health test generically hips, elbows, uh, eyes, uh, things like that hips, elbows, eyes, oh my god I'm completely I'm concentrating on what the dogs are doing and make sure that they're all good that they're all average or above average for the shape, size and dog because obviously we can't necessarily work out an average for lupine dogs because there are only a couple of hundred lupine dogs in existence and that doesn't give you, it's not a big enough number to give you a true average. So we have to work it out on what other large breeds of similar size um, have. Hey Dad. Um, so we made sure that they were average or above average and we pair them together. Now for the offspring, we then hope to get... I mean, you're not, you much love you at all. We then... Oh, Meg's coming. <laughs> Meg's a bit more enthusiastic with the kisses, so you have to you have to wind her down. Um, we then hope that we will get uh, the traits combined of mum and dad into one dog. So, you know, if your average litter is, for us, it's four to six. In this case, this litter was seven. It was a little bit bigger, but for me, my average litters are sort of four to six. I kind of hope that one of those will have a combination of the traits that I'm looking for in one dog brought together from the two parents, mum and dad. Now in this case I was looking for, I was looking for a lot of physical traits from dad. Gam? He's just kind of over there, but I was looking for um, a nice, clear, light 
coloured eye. Um, it's almost quite piercing really from a distance. I was hoping for either a very pale yellow or a green tint or something very light, um, quite striking. I was hoping for that from Dad physically. I was also hoping for more of the physical size of Dad and the shape of the ear and the width between the ears on the skull. From Mum, I'll just have a quick look at Mum and Dad, I was looking for her length of leg, length of neck, which is very important, and the furriness of the inside of her ear. And together, I was hoping that we could create a puppy that carried those features from Mum that I just talked about and the features from Dad that I just talked about. And I knew that was going to be a long shot because the chances are you're going to get, you know, I want the ears from Dad, so I'm probably going to get the ears from Mum and I want the eyes from Dad and I'm probably get the ears, uh, eyes from Mum. And, you know, it, it doesn't work out. Like, it's not... It's not good, perfect science because there are lots of traits and things that we can't yet test for. And even if we could, it would probably still only be a 50-50 chance or even less than that. So, yeah, that's a big gamble. So there was a lot of physical traits that I wanted to bring into one puppy. On top of that, there was a lot of temperamental traits that I wanted to bring together from mum and dad into one puppy. And mum is very confident. She's quite outgoing. She's also very opinionated. She also is very stubborn. She also is sometimes hyper-attached to me as her caregiver. And I wanted a dog that wasn't as hyper-attached. Hyper-attachment can be um, difficult, especially when you're dealing with larger breeds. Dad... <laughs> is the opposite, quite literally. So uh, dad is not as outgoing, he's not as confident, he's not hyper-attached, but he is super affectionate to me and to our family members. Super, super, super affectionate. Like, he would literally, look, such a baby. He just absolutely loves, 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 loves touching us, being around us, being a super baby. Yeah, so he's super hyper-affectionate but not hyper-bonded. So, I mean, maybe the reason how Evie's hyper-bonded isn't all about who she is, maybe how I raised her. We, were, we spent, you know, like literally every waking hour of the day together for a long, long time, for many years when she was young. So maybe it's that, but I didn't want that, and I didn't want a dog to be quite as outgoing as Eve can be. Now, people are like, what? Say, what? Why? Why would you not want them to be super outgoing? Well, because I live with them, I live with them day to day. Me and these dogs, we go out for long walks in the countryside, on the beach, in the woods, and we meet other people and their dogs. And my experience has taught me that having a super confident, hyper social dog that looks a bit like a wolf is pretty scary to other people and other dog walkers when I'm out and about. So when Eve sees another person walking a dog, her natural desire is to go over and say hi. And I have to restrain that every time because that's not something other dog walkers particularly want to happen. And don't get me wrong, some other people do. You know, my dog's on a leash. If their dog's on a leash and we want to meet and interact and they're cool with that, and I'm cool with the behavior of their dog and Eve's behavior, then we allow that to happen. But that is not the norm when I'm out and about walking these guys, okay? The norm is for me to allow people to see me walking my dogs politely, under control, without invading anyone else's space, without making anyone feel else feel uncomfortable or nervous in any way. So I wanted a dog that wasn't afraid to go out with me and do things, but at the same time, isn't trying to drag me up to every stranger that we meet. So the idea of putting these two parents together, Eve and Gambit, is their polar opposites about meeting new people and new situations. So I was hoping to find the happy medium. Now, when you put all of this together... It's a really, really long shot, guys, as a breeder. 
Um, first of all, I'm not a professional breeder, I'm a hobby breeder, so it's only something I do once a year maybe. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even once a year, as everyone knows, so it's a really long shot. And I thought I'd try it, see what I get, see if I get lucky. If you get lucky as a breeder and you do find what you're looking for, the repeating of the litter isn't actually a necessary thing to do. Yes, a lot of people still do it because they go, oh yeah, but I had success the first time, so I'm going to do it again. And if they have a large enough breeding program and they have a large enough population of dogs within their breed, then that's a great idea. I'm not dissing anybody that does that. But in my case, where we have a small population of dogs in our breed, and I am a small, very small scale hobby breeder, there's no benefit to me or to my breed to repeat the litter. Because I have the genetics that I want. I got lucky, I got super lucky with that one puppy. Got everything I wanted in one pup. And so I kept that puppy and he will move forward. So yeah, if you're guessing it was Dot, it wasn't Meg. I will talk about Meg and why she didn't quite hit every mark for me, but she hit most of them, hence why she's still here. But I did get one puppy in Dot, Dot, that ticked every box. So I have no need, and the breed has no need to repeat this litter. The genes now are in existence. We got everything we wanted in a super lucky one shot, which is incredibly rare. And we just got super lucky. I say we got super lucky. Bear in mind, we had to wait six, nearly seven years for this litter. So, you know, I'm not sure if that's really that lucky, but we did do it. We got what we wanted. And therefore, the breed isn't large enough to sustain multiple dogs all sharing exactly the same genetics. We need to diversify. We need to grow the gene pool. And you don't grow a gene pool by keep producing the same genes over and over. So we got what we wanted. We got Dot. We got a very close second in Meg um, as a the runner-up, that's awful, but that still makes her very, very, very exceptionally good in our mind. And the reason that we decided to keep the two was because A, obviously, Dot ticked all the boxes. He was definitely staying. But in an ideal world, the only thing he the only box he didn't tick is he's not female. And anyone who knows me knows my um, breeding plans, knows my preferences, my lifestyle here, knows that I prefer working with female dogs than I do to male dogs. Don't get me wrong, I love my boys, but I like to plan my breeding around my girls, which is kind of weird. A lot of people plan it around the boys, but I like my girls. Um, so if I'd have had, uh, if I could have had everything, I'd have had dot uh, in female. Now, Meg isn't quite dot in female. There's a lot of reasons why Meg doesn't tick every box. So first of all, Meg is more like her mom in the outgoing uh, category. She can be overly enthusiastic sometimes about novel situations. That obviously is more an advanced level management, I suppose, is the right way to describe it. That by no means am I some superhero, guys. You don't need to be back to all of that you don't need to be a superhero to own a wolf dog it just means you just have to be super hyper vigilant and I have to be super hyper vigilant when I'm out with Meg um, because she is uh, much more enthusiastic about the world in general about everything outside of her environment um, and she can sometimes you know she's young she can be a bit silly uh, you know sometimes that's not appropriate it's not definitely not always appropriate when we're out and about meeting new people, meeting new dogs. And that's a bit of a trait that, you know, needs to be curbed, gently curbed. Um, secondly, as you can probably see from here, Meg has a white uh, triangle on her chest. Here, see it? It was a stripe. It's kind of still a stripe. Oh, I think we're going to get serenaded now. Oh, yeah. 
Oh dear. Oh. Is that guys we're joining in guys no good let me carry on talking then right so Meg's got that white we called her Meg after white stripe because she had a white stripe on her chest she's still got a stripe it's now got a bit of a sort of nick on it so it's more a triangle whatever anyway that for me is not ideal as you can see looking at Dot there is no white zero white on Dot's chest now when he was born he had a teeny tiny teeny tiny Dot chill mommy oh roly potty right he had a teeny tiny like I don't know like two white hairs down there he still has two white hairs down there but you have to look really really closely to see it because obviously he now has uh, a little bit of, of undercoat coming through, which is always, Meg's is even greyer. Dot's has a slight cream touch to it at the moment, but it's harder to see now that they're getting their undercoat. But when they were first born, they were jet black, except for those few white hairs on their chest. Dot only had like two white hairs on his chest, and he still only has two white hairs on his chest, and that just makes him, in my opinion, more superior. By the way, that little white dot there would be a dog trait, not a wolf trait. So, obviously, we're trying to get them to look more like wolves. So, obviously, we, I wanted one that didn't have a lot of white on the chest. Um, Meg has that bit more. Um, the other things is Meg's eyes aren't quite light enough for me. They're not quite kind of bright enough either. Let me show you. So, this is Meg. Ha! Oh, hi, Meg. Uh, dot, did dot. Yeah, see, big difference in the eye color. Uh, basically, Dot got all the traits that I wanted physically. Meg got some of them, so she got the wonderful uh, long neck of her mother. She's actually got really good extension and super nice legs, long legs. Sorry, I'm kind of pointing the camera in the wrong direction. Hard to see, it's in tall grass, but she's also got a really nice ear shape from her daddy. Mm. Dots, yours are okay, but you've got a lot more fur, so they blend in, don't they? Um, and he, he has, he's just overall the better dog. I mean, physically, he's the best. So, I didn't get uh, quite what I wanted in a female, but I got everything that I wanted in a male, so I kept the male. And in Meg, in my opinion, although a little smaller than her other female siblings, um, is the best of the females, and... Now they're all about the same size anyway, so it makes no difference. I'm sure she'll grow up to be a very large dog anyway. Um, hi, Dad. So that's why I shall not be um, repeating this pairing. From definitely never again. I have no plans. Something would have to go horribly, horribly wrong and touch wood. That's me touching my head. Um... Nothing will go that terribly wrong. I won't. I wouldn't have to do that. I do, however, still plan to try and breed Eve once more, one more time. Uh, she is now seven years old, so this would be our uh, last winter, really, to to have a go where I'd be really comfortable having a go. Uh, she's still super fit, super healthy. Um, you know, I think she looks fantastic. She had seven puppies earlier this year. And her condition is just superb. Um, so I'm going to try and have one more go this winter. But Gambit will not be the father. Um, I will be pairing her up later this month or early November with a male that I hope she will develop a, a liking for. <laughs> Um, I mean, she likes all dogs, but I mean, you've got to be like, they've got to be in love to mate, guys. These are, these are not, you know, they're not terriers or whatever, Labradors. They won't mate anyone. 
Um, I'm hoping that she'll fall in love this winter with a new partner. And the who that partner is actually depends on how he health tests for me this month. So he is now coming up to two years old. And so later this month of October, he's going to have his hips x-rayed and his elbows x-rayed. And then at the very end of the month, he's going to see the British Veterinary Association ophthalmologist. He's going to go and have a, an eye test. He's had all his genetic tests, so I know that he's good genetically. But we need to check him out physically now and make sure that everything's okay. And if it is, I will be... I will be, what's the word? I'll be playing matchmaker. I'll be encouraging romance between those two guys. So Eve and Gambit are now enjoying their last days as a family, I guess, as a family unit. Mum, dad, two babies. Mum, dad, two babies. Because um, the babies are now coming up to six months old. They're not quite six months old. Um, and obviously... <laughs> You know, I mean, they're not wolves, guys, so I don't have to compare them to wild wolves. But if they were wild wolves, these guys would stay together as a family unit for many years. They're not. Um, and, you know, they still love each other. They still have very deep emotions. But they're not wild wolves. And they won't stay together as a family for that length of time. Um, I will be doing much more work with these two youngsters again this this winter. As they hit adolescence, we're going to have to do lots of adolescent work with them, which is different to their puppy training that they've been having so far. And well, more an extension of that. And Eve will hopefully be, you know, meeting and falling in love with a new man who will hopefully be whining and dining her. And Gambit, oh, Gambit is probably not going to have a new love until early next year so gambit doesn't need new loves i'll tell you why gambit doesn't need new loves because gambit already loves all the girly doggies at my home at our home gambit is just in love with every dog every dog like i mean he's fluid right fluid aren't you gam gambit is just in love with every dog he ever meets so I don't have to, uh, if I want Gambit to um, be uh, paired, let's say, with another female, he isn't. He doesn't take as much convincing as a lady does. Now, is that because he's a boy? Maybe. Maybe boys just don't need as much romance as girls. I don't know. Comment below. <laughs> I don't know. I genuinely. Maybe it's because he's a boy, and you know he'll just take what he can get. Maybe, or maybe because he's more easily pleased. Or I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is, Gambit doesn't need that extended period of whining and dining and falling in love that I know my little sweetheart Eve up there needs. So I may be pairing Gambit with another dog later in the year or very early next year but I won't have to be um, doing that as early as I'll be doing it with Eve here so there you go next video uh, you know other than like a few bits and bobs on Facebook will be Eve and her new bow I've already fly sprayed these guys today and look at this it's still it's October why are these things still here I've had to fly spray their ears, by the way, every single day this summer. And as you can see, that's been super successful. My dog's ears are intact because I use fly spray. Use fly spray, people. Um, you know, you can get it for pets. You spray it on their ears. Uh, it stops the bloody flies out whenever you're outside nibbling on your pointy-eared pets. Okay? Don't let the flies eat your dog's ears, people. I see so many videos with wolf dogs with bloody nibbled ears. Use fly spray. Anyway, they should be about gone by now. It's October, but it's like surprisingly still very mild. It's wet, but it's mild. So we still got too many flies around. So we're still, we're still using the ear spray, the fly spray on their ears every day. And I use a little bit on their back too. Because, you know, keep your dogs, don't want to keep them comfortable 
So yes, the next big video will hopefully be Eve um, settling in, telling me whether or not she likes my taste in men for her. I will warn everyone now, Eve has not previously liked all of my choices in men for her. Um, the, when she was younger, uh, we chose a dog that was um, bred by the Cypress Creek Kennel, and he was absolutely gorgeous, stunning boy. Eve was not as impressed as I was. So, you know, she, she were friends, but she didn't get any hanky-panky there. She was not interested. And, you know, later on we tried um, a boy that had a Southern Breeze background, and she was not too... She liked him, for sure. She was flirty with him, but again, not too keen on doing the do getting down to business um and she she has loved gambit for some time now um she loved him last winter and i i didn't let them actually get the done dude uh done but last winter winter before my goodness because i felt gambit was still too immature at that time it was his second winter and he wasn't quite mature enough so by his third winter so that means that poor old evie here um was six years old coming on seven uh, when she had that last litter. So she, the litter were born a few days before she turned seven. And she's seven now. And again, this... Because she comes into season at exactly the same time every year. Um, she will, again, still be seven when she has this litter. Um, if, if she has this next litter. We'll see, won't we, baby girl? But he's a lovely match for you. Let's, fingers crossed, his health tests all work out great. And... Um, she likes him, but yeah, I won't be repeating the litter because I got this, guys. Look at it. Why repeat something when perfection has already been achieved? Baby boy. He's like, what? But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I could not be more happy than I am with this puppy. This puppy is five months old. He is super affectionate super affectionate super gentle he's a great house pet he's such a good boy he loves to learn he loves to train he's very gentle he's the beautiful happy medium between too outgoing and not outgoing enough he's that perfect sweet spot in between where you can trust him to do anything predict what he's thinking maybe that's because he's a boy he's a little more predictable as well but he is just everything I've ever wanted and so we got it well, we won't be doing it again but the line will continue the genes will continue they'll continue through both dot who I'll be looking for the perfect female for in the future and Meg who, you know, those things that I didn't quite hit that perfection dot with, I'll be looking for a boy to be able to achieve that. Oh, still loads of great things to come. Uh, over and out, guys. Catch you later.